Okay, what we're going to do in this section is add and subtract with like denominators. Uh, when you're going to add or subtract rational expressions with like denominators, all you need to do is add their numerators. In other words, the denominators on the bottom, numerators are on the top. Then place the result over the common denominator. So in this slide and on the next, we're going to let A, B, and C uh, be numbers or expressions, and C cannot be 0, um, and, and B cannot be 0. Well, I'm, and I'm looking, I got a small t typo. This should be a C. So as long as the denominators are the same, all I have to do is add the tops. And uh, I've shown you how to do that with the variables um, right here. And I've shown you how to do that with the variables over here. Okay. And so how that would look in real life? Well, if my denominators are the same, I add the tops. And that's just going to be like 3x plus 7 over 5x squared because the denominators are the same. I just add the tops. I cannot put 3x with 7. They are different. On the flip side, uh, over here on the other side, I've got uh, x plus 1 as my common denominator. So that would be 9x cubed minus x squared over x plus 1. And then um, we, would, we would just check and see if this would reduce or not. So we could factor out the x squared. And that would give us 9 times x minus 1. And it doesn't factor. So we're good on that guy. But again, the denominators are the same. All you do is add the tops. Some more examples. If I have 7 over 4x plus 3 over 4x, that's going to be 7 plus 3 over 4x, which is 10 over 4x. And 10 over 4x reduces by 2 to 5 over 2x. And then the last guy, 2x minus 5 over x plus 6 for both, it would just be 2x minus 5 over x plus 6. We love common denominators. It makes life a lot easier uh, to deal with. And uh, there's nothing that we have to do that's out of the ordinary. OK, so now we want to add and subtract. Uh, fractions with different denominators. And this is just like what you did in grade school. You have to have the denominators be the same in order to add or subtract. And if your denominators are different, you have to get them to be the same. So uh, in this case, uh, we're going to take um, two unlike denominators. We're going to find a common denominator and then rewrite each rational expression with the common denominator. Then we can add or subtract. Um, and so the examples that I've got for you just with the variables up here, notice it. I've got C and D on the bottom. Those are not the same. But just like in grade school, if I multiply the A by the D's, and I multiply the B by the C's, and whatever I multiply on top, I multiply on bottom, then I get my end result, which is this guy right here. Okay, It's exactly what you did in like fifth grade when you started messing around with these things. It's absolutely no different. Okay, But now the problems are going to look a little bit more challenging and difficult. We're still going to follow the same steps. And keep this in mind. This one simple rule to always keep in mind, and it's this. Whatever you do on the top, whatever happens on top of the fraction, Whatever happens on top of the fraction happens on the bottom of the fraction. So as you're working these things out, don't forget that what you do on top, you have to do on the bottom. Okay, And then um, what we're going to see here is that you can always find the common denominator of two rational functions by multiplying their denominators. However, if you use the least common denominator, which is the least common multiple of the denominators, you have less simplifying to do. So there's two kind of two different ways to do this. And if you can simplify first, it'll make it easier in the end. So let's look at that. Find the least common multiple of the following equations. And the best way to do that is to factor out both parts. So on this top guy, what I'm going to do is just factor out a 4. And that gives me x squared minus 4. And then I factor the x squared minus 4. 
that's this guy. And then down here, I, fa I can factor out a 6, and that will give me x squared minus 4x plus 4. Okay, and then I can factor that guy, so it's going to be x minus 2 times x minus 2. So my common multiple in this case is x minus 2. That's what's in both that's what's in both pieces okay so um, if I if I want to combine these together okay if I'm going to combine these together then I'm going to start with the x minus twos because they both have that and then on the bottom I don't have an x plus two so I'm going to add one of those and on the top I'm missing one of the x minus twos so I'm going to add one of those. And then think about 4 and 6. What number do 4 and 6 both go into evenly? And that would be 12. So I need to add a 3 on the top. And I need to add a 2 on the bottom. And this is going to give me my least common uh, multiple um, for my fractions. So basically what we're going to have here is 12 times x plus 2 times x minus 2 squared and uh, that would be your answer okay so if we want to add these two guys together they obviously have different uh, denominators and, and frankly the easiest way to do this is to go ahead and and factor them out and see what's missing so that you can multiply the top and the bottom by that thing so on the left, there's nothing I can do. This 9x squared, he's he's done. Okay. On the right, though, I can factor this guy out, and and when I do, I can pull out a 3 and an x, and that will give me x plus 1. Okay. So now I look at the denominators and I try and figure out what the left side needs that the right side has. And so if I've got 9x squared over here, I've got the x part. But I don't have an x plus 1. And that's all I'm missing. Okay. On the right hand side I go, okay, I've got a 3x, but I need a 9, so I'm going to multiply by 3. And I've got an x squared here, but just an x, so I'm going to multiply by x. And and so now what I have on the left, um, well let's just look at this. What I've got now is I've got 9x squared times x plus 1. And on the right, I've got 9x squared times x plus 1. So, uh, remember, whatever you do on the bottom, you have to do on the top. And so where the 7 is, since I multiplied on the bottom to x plus 1, that's what I'm going to multiply by on the top. And that's what I get. And on the right, since I multiplied by 3x on the bottom, that's what I multiply by on the top. And then combine all these guys together into 1. So I'm going to have 7x plus 7 plus 3x squared all over 9x squared times x plus 1. And now I can go ahead and combine everything together on the top, which is going to be 3x squared plus 7x plus 7 over 9x squared times x plus 1. Okay, so on this one what we're going to do is uh, add these, subtract these two fractions and they do not have common denominators. So I'm looking on the left and I've got 2x minus 1. On the right, I'm going to go ahead and factor that guy, and that's going to be x minus 3 and x minus 1. So when I look at this, uh, on, the, on the left, what does the left need? The left needs an x minus 3, and the left needs an x minus 1. The right needs a 2x minus 1. So this problem becomes...
x minus 3 times x minus 1 times 2x minus 1. And on the right, I've got x minus 3, x minus 1, and 2x minus 1. And are these both the same? Is this guy the same as this guy? And the answer is yes. So since that's true, then on the top where I've got my x plus 2 on the left, I'm going to multiply that with x minus 3 and x minus 1. Because whatever I do on the bottom, I have to do on the top. On the other side, I've got negative 2x minus 1. And then I'm going to have to multiply that by 2x minus 1. Because again, whatever I do on the left, I have to do on the right. And so... Um, once, once we do that, uh, we can start trying to figure out a way to foil, to uh, put these guys together. And so um, this is potentially going to be a little bit on the gross side, but that's all right. Uh, I'm going to have x plus 2, and then I'm going to go ahead and do in red because I know that's got to be x squared minus 4x plus 3 minus, and then parentheses, and on the right, negative 4x squared, uh, let's see, plus 2x minus 2x, so that goes away, so plus 1 over x minus 3 times x minus 1 times 2x minus 1, and, and then go ahead and foil this guy all the way out and so when you when you do that you end up with x cubed minus 4x squared plus 3x plus 2x squared minus 8x uh, plus 6 plus 4x squared minus 1 all over x minus 3, x minus 1, and 2x minus 1. And then just combine together the things on the top that are the same. So x cubed is all by himself. There's only one of those. And then the 4x squareds. Here's a 4x squared. Here's an x squared. Here's an x squared. And when I put all of those together, the 4x squareds go away, and I'm left with 2x squared. And then put your x's together. So 3x minus 8x. And then 6 minus 1, which is 5. So my end result on this guy is this answer right here. He's kind of long and gross, but that's kind of how these problems can sometimes be. Okay, so then on this guy, what we want to do is simplify a complex fraction. And these can be really challenging, so you've got to pay attention to kind of what you're doing. And uh, it's a fraction that contains a fraction in its numerator and denominator. And a complex fraction can be simplified using one of two methods. One, simplify the numerator and denominator by writing each as a single fraction, then divide. The other method is to multiply the numerator and denominator, denominator by the least common denominator of every fraction. So, uh, let's go ahead and look at method one on uh, this first guy. And basically what we want to do is simplify the numerator and denominator by writing each as a single fraction. Well, the top is okay. He's, he's done. He is a single fraction. The bottom, though, isn't. And so, to make the bottom a single fraction, I need to multiply this guy by x plus 4 on the top and on the bottom. And I need to multiply this guy by x on the top and on the bottom. And so my new bottom is going to be x plus 2x plus 8 over x times x plus 4. Okay? And so what I'm going to do then, after I do that, I'm going to divide the numerator by the denominator, which means multiply by the reciprocal. So I have 5 over x plus 4 
times the reciprocal, x over x plus 4, divided by, and then 3x plus 8. So um, now that we're multiplying, if we're doing, if we're multiplying everything on the top and on the bottom at the same time, we can divide out chunks of stuff. So my one chunk is x plus 4 that totally divides out, and I'm left with 5x over 3x plus 8. If we're going to use method 2, then what we have to do is multiply the numerator and denominator by the least common multi uh, fraction. And when we look at that, I've got x plus 4 on the top, I've got x plus 4 on the bottom right, and I've got an x. So the top is missing x over x. The left on the bottom is missing x over x. And the right is missing x plus 4 over x plus 4. Remember, whatever we do in the numerator, we have to do in the denominator. So my new fraction then is 5x over x times x plus 4 over uh, x plus 2 times x plus 4 over x times x plus 4. Okay, so, so that right there is the least common denominator. Then simplify. So when I simplify now I have division and when I divide I multiply by the reciprocal. So what I'm going to end up with here is 5x over x times x plus 4 times the reciprocal of the denominator x times x plus 4 over x plus 2x plus 8. And guess what? We're going to have the exact same thing. My x times x plus 4 cancels out, and I'm left with 5x over 3x plus 8. So these are the kind of the two different methods that you can use.